Hey, what's guys? Aaron here, and welcome back to another part of my F1 2007 My Team Carimo. This is part number four today for the Belgium Grand Prix and the Italian GP. If you guys did miss the previous episode of the Canadian Grand Prix, our very first wet race of the season, and also Monaco, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. That Canadian GP especially was rather spicy at the beginning on lap one with, of course, of course, Fernando Alonso and Hamilton, McLaren teammates coming together. It really wouldn't be 2007 if those two didn't come to blows. And then Silverstone, an absolutely epic battle with the Ferraris, my teammate, the McLarens as well at the home GP. And we were able to secure a pretty amazing result. And going into this part of this series, we lead the Drivers' Championship somehow ahead of both Ferrari cars. But they're so damn quick and Belgium and Italy, long straights. We know Ferrari are so good in that department this season with that engine of theirs. I think it's going to be a real challenge to try and keep this lead going, but we'll try our best. Let's get into it. The Belgium Grand Prix. We had our first wet race in Canada where we've got our first wet qualifying here around Spa and it's heavy rain as well as we've got the full wets on. Let's see if this could potentially equalize the pace I'm hoping a little bit compared to Ferrari but I'm very scared as I said about their pace in the race. It's going to be a dry one on Sunday so let's try and make the most of this and generally speaking we did in sector two until this last sector. Look at that exit that Massa got on the ghost here of that one shot quality. So it looks like Massa is undoubtedly going to be on pole position. I wouldn't be surprised if Raikkonen is in the middle of myself and him as we're in P3 according to the top left here. We gain a bit under braking. A little bit cautious because I wasn't too sure what the brakes were going to say into that corner as we saw at Canada. Could be quite tricky in these cars to slow it down for a slow corner. We're going such high speed with the kind of lack of grip I would say at low speed with this generation of cars and we do get third place at least but I, I think it's a Ferrari 1-2 lockout would not be surprised and that means it's going to be a difficult race today as I said we've got the lead of the championship but it's uh, maybe going to be a case of uh, damage limitation in this one to just try and well uh, minimum hold our P3 but try and at least get one of those Ferraris maybe early into turn one on lap one and then see what we can do but from what I've from what I've seen so far in the series they're going to be mighty quick in both these races we've got today but let's see now confirm the full grid to you it is a Ferrari front row lockout Massa on pole position ahead of Kimi Raikkonen us in P3 of course David Coulthard in P4 so again like at Silverstone a Red Bull out qualifies both McLarens where where is their pace gone? Is Kobe Ashi also ahead of them in P5? Alonso, Hamilton 6, 7, Fisichella P8, Kovalainen and Weber round out the top 10. Then you've got Trulli and Jensen Button, Ralph Schumacher, Robert Kubica, Nick Eiffel, Sebastian Vettel P16, Takuma Sato and Alexander Wurtz in P18, and then Rubens Marichello 19th with Liuzzi P20, Davidson and Rosberg with the grid penalty at the back of the grid. But yeah, McLaren very much unlike an 07, not keeping up pace with Ferrari, very much so. And Red Bull getting the jump on them so clearly Red Bull's AI team upgrading well as have Ferrari clearly as we had that brief moment where we were equalized pace with them but they've got ahead of us they've locked out the front row it's going to be a difficult race but let's try and make life as difficult as possible for them if we can as we go to five red lights to the Belgian Grand Prix it's a little bit of wheel spin for myself and Raikkonen good getaway for Lupe, uh, Felipe Massa into turn one he's going to remain in P1 and unfortunately we can't do anything to dive bomb Raikkonen in there to 
Rogers, so we stay in third place. Cool Thada remains in P4, and Kobayashi is now having a fight with both McLarens. It'll be three wide through our Rouge, up Radion, and then the Kevel straight. Kobayashi gets minced by both McLarens, and even has a Renault for company there. So Kobayashi not looking too quick at the start of this Grand Prix, whether it's just cold tyres from the formation up or what, but he's feeling the pressure, and both McLarens ahead. He locks up, and Kobayashi loses another position. This is unlike him. He was in such fine form in recent races, but he's dropped down three positions there, lost both places to the McLarens, and now is in a Renault sandwich. He's going to go and try and overtake that Renault that has overtaken him to try and get back through. We ride on board with him as we go now towards Blanchimont, and then the bus stop chicane on the outside. But, you know, in these 07 era of cars with seventh gear maxing out, yeah, very much hit a limiter, and you kind of want more. You almost want an eighth gear in this car, and it's kind of frustrating. Um, you just can't find any more speed as it tops out, basically. But Kobayashi manages to outbreak the Renault and get ahead, but you'll see what I mean about the frustration of topping out in a moment as we go on towards sector three on lap three. We're closing up to Raikkonen and keeping pace with the Ferraris just about in the corners, but losing all the ground on the straights. We try and have a go round the outside of the Iceman, but he is very stern in his defense and kind of, you know, assured in it, holding the racing line, not getting scared off at all or phased at all. I mean, he is the Iceman, so he's kept it very cool. But then you're going to see here as we close in, initially, we do gain a bit and keep up with Kimi, but then he's going to start pulling away as we go on towards Blanchimon, uh, because you, we just don't have any more speed, we're topping out 192 miles per hour and we just don't have anything else to have a go at Ferrari, so this is going to be definitely a challenging Grand Prix to say the least, versus those two chasing me down the championship, but one man who is making moves is Kobayashi despite losing the three positions he's trying to make up for it, he's got one he's now going to get two, as he has a go at Fernando Alonso on the inside so clearly McLaren don't have this advantage of engine power and in a straight line it's Renault engine in the back of our car versus the Mercedes side by side Kobayashi on the inside he's going to try and get the elbow out Alonso on the outside line to get to the traction actually a little bit better than Kamui but he's going to hold through and into turn one he'll get the position Alonso is going to slot in behind on the exit of turn one a little bit of contact made and Kamui holds station and gets that second position to uh, nearly complete his recovery. But at the sharp end, Massa, a little bit under pressure from Raikkonen, goes wide at turn one, and now the Ferraris will be side by side. This could be our moment. If they're fighting enough, they're side by side up the hill through Radion. Now down the Kemmel straight. A little bit of contact made as they enter the straight, and can we get in the middle of it? It doesn't look like it, unfortunately, even though they're side by side, so they're not even getting any toe from anyone. We still can't make up the pace in a straight line but this now may be our chance in this little section through the corners can we catch Massa napping because Raikkonen takes the lead of the Belgium Grand Prix we try to feed the car in down the inside twice there but we lock up and the second time we're just met with the right rear tyre of Massa who holds the racing line as we're hustling and harrying him going a little bit wide on the exit and just I, I feel like you can see the frustration uh, for myself in the cockpit we want to get this done I'm desperate to get one of these Ferraris and so we're going to send it on Massa. Bang tyres but no contact made in terms of car to car. Just rubber to rubber and we're just going to have some hard and fast racing to get it done up into P2. It wasn't pretty but it was a crucial move that we had to make because I think that's our best chance and maybe our best chance of the entire race to just get one of these Ferrari cars um, and split them and do some damage limitations basically but you may have noticed that a lot of us or if not or everyone has started on the harder compound attire in this race so I'm going to actually pit in on this lap and try and go to the middle set attire and try and gain some, gain some speed hopefully with an undercut now so far in this series the overcut's been the better way to go but that's also been because everyone started on the softer range of compounds we've all started on hards on the top left you can see so I'm hoping we can maybe gain some time although to be fair I don't actually know with the mod. I'm not quite sure on what the kind of delta time difference is between
speed into the compounds, of course, with the Bridgestones back in 07. It was a very different ball game to the Pirellis. Wasn't as much of a gigantic gap between, you know, sets of tyres. And in terms of, you, know, you had the P and you had the M back in the day, basically, as they were noted, uh, instead of all the soft, medium, and hard we have now. But we exit the pit lane and we get a crucial pass done on Trulli through uh, Rouge. We had to make that overtake because I did not want to get stuck in a Trulli train. But unfortunately, I also meet Kovalainen, who is a bit slow in the second sector, loses us a little bit of time. So even if I was to gain some time on the undercar, I feel like it may have been just scrubbed away marginally by those two fights. We catch up to Alonso, who's looking pretty slow. You know, if you're scratching your head, you know, even I've been scratching my head of where the pace of McLaren has gone. Well, it just, you, you can see it in the difference of just in a straight line and also just through the corners. The Ferraris are able to match us, give us a really hard fight. Alonso there, just seemingly a bit of a sitting duck. Now, of course, he's at the end of his stint. Hamilton comes into the pit, so Alonso has to go on for one more lap, so maybe he's feeling a bit of tire wear, to be fair. But at the same time, yeah, just kind of almost a bit frustrating to see McLaren haven't kept up pace with the R&D upgrades. But of course, that is the way my team goes. You know, you can't really control what the AI do. And uh, McLaren, as an AI team, they haven't kind of, you know, shown up in the same way they did in the real-life 07 season taken it down to the last couple of races but in the in the background for the midfield fight there's an absolute ding dong battle going on between the likes of Toro Rosso Williams uh, BMW Sauber the Honda team as well even I think uh, the Super Guri there of uh, Davidson getting in the mixer so these guys are having quite a battle there as I think it's JB in the Honda trying to overtake the Toro Rosso and then behind Davidson in the Super Guri a uh, bit of a mobile chicane I guess for the Williams and the other Toro Rosso behind him but uh, as we go on and look through the racing order as now most people have made their pit stops Massa came out behind us in third place and we're chasing down Raikkonen and it is a chase because on the last half of the Grand Prix we are within two tenths now so we bridged that gap it was over one second after the pit stops we pulled away from Massa showing that in clean air this car has some good pace but in unfortunately in those racing scenarios like this right now in sector three it's difficult to match Ferrari. We're pushing and pushing, and on the last lap, could this be it? A dramatic final last lap battle with Kimi in the last sector, last couple of corners. No, we just can't do it through Blanchimont. He just has that extra bit of pace. That was as close as we've gotten to making an overtake on a Ferrari on the back straight into the last corner. I just can't do anything, and we have to accept defeat to Raikkonen. He gets the win at the Belgium GP, but we limit the damage by getting second place ahead of Felipe Massa, but to be fair, he, you know, Kimi looked like he had the pace all along. He overtook his teammate fair and square and then just pulled away. We did well to chase him down, but it's his day today. And talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. So Raikkonen delivered the goods for this Scuderia. We tried so hard and we got tantalisingly close, but he did well to squeeze us into the left-hander just before the run to Blanchimont. So clever driving from the Iceman, keeping his head cool as ever in that scenario. But we do get ahead of Massa, so we're not going to lose points to him and we're going to limit the damage as much as we can to Raikkonen, who does take the lead of the driver's chair championship now going towards the Italian Grand Prix so that is going to be another corker that's going to be diff even probably more difficult than Belgium to be honest because that's got even more straight even low down even more low downfall set up there so Ferrari could actually have a fantastic home GP and will be hoping along with Kobe Ashi and I really kind of beg McLaren as well can spoil the party for the Italian team at their home race but we're gonna have to find out but fighting down below continuing on for those midfield teams you know, Renault getting ahead of Sauber now, Toyota ahead of Honda. So nice to see in the background in the midfield fight. You know, we've seen that every uh, every race that's been swapping left, right and centre. You know, Renault, Sauber, Williams, Toyota, Honda getting ahead of each other, basically, and taking points off each other. So that's going to be quite a close fight towards the end of the season. But let's go on then to that Italian GP. Can we spoil the party for the Italians? <laughs> Yeah. 
It's back-to-back -back wet qualifyings here in part number four of this mini-series. Monza, the rain has followed us to Italy. And I'm hoping, again, this could be some kind of equaliser. But my pace into turn one, not that great. I've set the wings to as low as possible to give us the best chance in the race. But that has meant the car is a little bit unstable in these conditions. We do gain back some time, though, and get up to P6, 5, and 4 even into that next left hander and we're going to maintain that kind of pace as we go into the last sector now towards Parabolica just going down to P4 on the top left in this one shot quality Massa again looking strong for the pole position up to third on the entry to Parabolica so could we get another third place here and just match what we did at Belgium and then leave it to that run to turn one to see what we can do across the line it is going to be third place Again, frustrations of not being able to do anything more. I think if we got a better exit and entry into turn one and carried better speed, we may have been able to actually get on the front row because we made back that loss of time in sector two and especially sector three there you saw. So what could have been if I didn't get turn one and the exit of turn two so messed up with the rear end stepping out? But it is what it is. We're going to have to now try and psych ourselves up because it looks like it is going to be a one-two for Ferrari. Front row lockout, not too shocking to be honest, but we have a longer run to turn one now compared to Spa, so we have got to, we have got to try and overtake Raikkonen into turn one, because if we don't, if we don't I really fear both Ferraris may run away with it. Unlike Spa, there aren't enough corners to try and catch him. So it's going to be a difficult one. The McLarens do look a bit quicker here, as you saw in that grid sequence. So I'm hoping they could get involved in the mixer. Maybe kind of, you know, because uh, Coulthard with a 10th place penalty there down in P15. So maybe he couldn't actually out-qualify them this time round. And Sebastian Vettel, for as much as uh, he, he got glory in the Toro Rosso around Monza in 08, here in 07, not so much luck for him. To be fair, in real life in 07, he wasn't a full-time Toro Rosso driver yet, so you can probably excuse the lack of performance there. But for us, well, we performed as best we could to get third place, but as I alluded to, this run to turn one could be crucial for this entire championship. It's overcast, but there's no rain on the way, but conditions may be colder. Let's see if that's going to affect anything, and our low wings as well, as we go to five red lights to the Italian Grand Prix here in Monza. Can we spoil the party for Scuderia Ferrari. It's a pretty decent getaway. Raikkonen going super defensive on the inside, but we're going to go to the inside of himself as he takes the racing line, go over the curb, and we crucially get up into second place. He left the door open. He should have stayed on the inside there, but instead decided to cover off other cars and take to the normal racing line. Left the door open, and we have just walked on through it. So like in Spa, we split the two Ferraris. This time, Massa is the one in the lead and to be honest I don't really mind if he goes on to win this race but we need to try and stay ahead of Raikkonen but that is going to be easier said than done because he is going to be so quick in a straight line even though we're running 1-1 wings I doubt that's going to make much of a difference with this 07 mod as we now try and block him off on the right hand side then go to the inside to defend for the upcoming Ascari corner Raikkonen on the outside he does get ahead of us but we'll outbreak him get to the apex first get the elbow out as well and scrub wide and Kimi is left now to look behind him as we try and break the toe as well and the McLaren might get involved it's Fernando Alonso I think that is Kobayashi right behind him Hamilton meanwhile trying to overtake the Red Bull behind you can see into Parabolica where they're giving him a tough fight on the inside they'll both get on the power early with a track control in these machines and it's going to be a drag race now down to turn one such is this fight as well for of us all on the same straight. Raikkonen gaining on us though. We'll go defensive and stick to the inside line unlike uh, what he did on lap one and defend that successfully and bunch him up into Alonso and Kobayashi but there's only so much I can do and he's going to come knocking again and get ahead of us briefly into that corner again. We're just trying our best to hold him up and slow him up and I'm kind of praying Alonso can you please just pull your finger out and get a move done because clearly I don't have the pace you know just out of thin air to actually stay ahead of Raikkonen but if Alonso or Kobayashi or Hamilton want to get involved that may help me but there's only so much of this I can do to defend Raikkonen eventually it may be inevitable he overtakes us unless that happens Alonso got down the inside as we 
went deep into turn one. And Alonso is going to get a slipstream off us to get up into third place. This is what we need. We need more cars in between ourselves and Raikkonen to ensure we just basically have some hurdles for him to try and cross. And hopefully he trips over on those hurdles and gets stuck behind one of the McLarens rather than myself. But unfortunately, one of those hurdles, Alonso actually wants to get past me as well. And we're not going to fight it too much because we're not in a championship fight with Fernando Alonso at all. So there's no point really giving it too much of a fight. But what we do need to worry about is Raikkonen being right behind us. A little bit of contact made into Parabolica. Just checking the damage there. No damage done for us. We're going to squeeze Kimi all the way to the right. Bit of banging ties as well as he is determined to get through on the inside because he wants to try and go for the double pass. He's made contact with Alonso though and that was pretty hefty and maybe potentially he may have just got damage off that because that was a heavy clout as he locked up into turn one. So that might just help us out a little bit as we do re-overtake him, but he's pulling through again as we get up to seventh gear. We're gonna have to try and outbreak him and then we give him the hard shoulder squeeze out and that's gonna allow Hamilton to get in the mix and overtake him potentially around the outside. So we've lost the position to Alonso. That's fine though by me, but crucially we re-overtook Raikkonen and thankfully he didn't pull off that pass on Alonso. Otherwise that would have been my pants pulled down a little bit as he got away from us and got two cars for one. But instead, I think he actually may have got damaged because now he's five tenths away from Raikkonen, uh, from Hamilton, sorry, uh, who was behind us, now is ahead of us into the final corner. We're going to fight Lewis a little bit more just to try and give us one car between us and Kimi. I didn't mind letting Alonso go through because actually Raikkonen was so close to us. We needed someone to get a bit of a toe off. But with Hamilton, Raikkonen's far enough behind here that we can maybe try and fight this a bit more. But now we go defensive because Kimi is there now. So having to change tactics on the fly, basically, and try and use the McLaren to help me out a bit. Uh, but like I said, if I can re-overtake Hamilton, I will try and do so. But he has some pretty good pace on this set of tyres. He's coming in. I'm coming in lap seven as well as Raikkonen. So the plan is I will try if I can to re-overtake Hamilton and again give us that buffer. But uh, having to use the McLarens to help help us a little bit into turn one, pull us along just that little bit to make sure we stay ahead of Kimi. You know, really this, uh, this, this concentration is all on the ice, man. Who does have to change his front wing? So he must have got damage with that contact with Alonso into turn one. So that's going to lose him time. We come out again right behind Hamilton, but Kimi now a couple of positions back having to go through traffic then that surely will be and so that'll be him down a few positions we'll see off Kobayashi down the main straight as he comes out along with Coulthard and both of them will be ahead of Raikkonen so this is very good but we're now pushing to the max to try and chase after Hamilton using first gear to rotate the car a bit better into that curb and using a bit more of the curb with these 07 cars able to ride them a lot better than the modern F1 cars we know today Raikkonen though behind us making moves on the lower cars that he's now behind having a go at the Williams at the moment and then the Renault will be up next but he makes easy work of the Williams around the outside at turn two and then down on the main straight is going to fly past the Renault and get past one more position to get up into I believe P7 as we've got uh, the Red well two Red Bulls and a Renault ahead of them Kobayashi and then myself Hamilton and then of course Alonso's in P2 and Massa he's loving life he's way ahead dominating this one so we're not going to spoil the party completely for the Italian fans they're going to have Massa to cheer about for the race win but I'm hoping to get Hamilton on lap 12 dive down the inside very late on the brakes purple first sector this is going to turn into a great battle bit of contact made as I lost the back end a little bit on the exit and we'll keep it side by side now there's the entire section Hamilton as well does have a slight advantage on the straights not as much as Ferrari but in the corners we're clearly quicker than McLaren and you saw that with Kobayashi and myself overtaking Alonso at Spa so easily on the braking. And we do get Hamilton, but he's going to keep up the fight into the last lap of the Grand Prix. You saw he, he was moving about in the brake zone into that right-hander before. And we'll probably try and make a move into a Scar race. So we're going to try and hold our position, defend as well as we can on the inside. He'll go to the outside. That's fine. We'll try and outbreak him into the left-hander. Get to that apex. Oh, lock up. A lock up for us on the front left. Sends us wide along with Hamilton, though. Bit of contact made again, but we just about keep ahead. But 
couldn't do anything about the lockup, uh, so uh, Hamilton just joined me along for that passenger ride. And Kobayashi now has a go at him into the final corner. Can Kobayashi get P4? I don't think so. I think Hamilton's staying ahead in P4. We're going to get P3 on the podium along with Fernando Alonso and Felipe Massa. But with Raikkonen down the order, we have done some great work there to try and get some more points over him and try and take the lead of the championship once again off the back of the Iceman. Talk to me, Ant. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. Well, Massa may have just got himself into the title fight with that race win. Myself down in P3, so it's not all just about Kimi. Massa is lurking in the background, and I think he's got himself into a pretty good position. He may even actually have overtaken Raikkonen in the championship with those, uh, the, those 25 points. Obviously, a lot lower points for Raikkonen. Let's have a look then. So, Kimi did finish in P8. P8, not P7, P8. So he only gets four points then. So in the standings, we will take the lead of the championship once again. Raikkonen is still in second, but Massa is now only two points back. So he didn't quite overtake his teammate in the championship, but two points back. So it is us versus the two Ferraris, as it was at the start of this episode. But for a moment, it looked like myself and Kimi might be pulling away from Massa there a little bit. But with that brilliant win for him, he's got himself still in it going into the final episode which is the next part part number five coming out tomorrow guys so till then hope you enjoyed this one if you did hit the like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you're around here then do get subscribed for weekly formal on content and i'll see you tomorrow for the finale of this f1 2007 my team career mode mini series